YouTube, welcome back to another opening video. Today we're going to be exploring the Ungland Gambit. It is a Gambit for Black, which is actually bad from the start. Uh, it's recommended that you don't play this, but it is pretty fun if you can pull it off. It's named after a Swedish chess player, Fritz Carl Anton Ungland. And without further ado, let's get right into it. If you're like me and play white, you will probably play d4, and this is supposedly one of black's worst responses, e5, the Ungland Gambit. Now just to make sure I hit every single possibility here, their best move is to take, but if they don't, if they play something like e3 or e4, our best move is to take back without a doubt. If they play anything, anything at all, we take. We take in the center and that's it. No ifs, ands, or buts. But... <laughs> No ifs, ands, or buts, but if they take back, the idea with the gambit is that we attack the pawn immediately with something like knight c6, and all of white's best moves kind of fall in line with this particular gambit, so knight f3 follows suit, it's their best move, defends their knight, and now we have queen e7 just bringing an extra attacker onto the pawn. It's in this position that we have the first defining move for white. Bishop g5 is their best move, although it's not part of the gambit, I'll show it anyway because it's it makes perfect sense for them to do that. We have two moves. We have queen e6 or we have f6. If we go f6, then they can take. It's not a problem. And then we just take back with our knight. If we go queen e6 instead and they do something normal like develop, then we can take the pawn in the center, trade knights, and now our queen is attacking their bishop. And uh, it's about plus one for white here because we're so underdeveloped, but we can come out and pin this. We can develop this like normal castle short. So it's not the end of the world if they play bishop g5, but it's also not the gambit. So let's go back and we'll explore the uh, the first defining move. If white plays passively, instead of playing bishop g5 attacking our queen, they will play bishop f4 defending their pawn. And now we have this beautiful trifecta fork with queen b4 check, attacking the bishop, attacking the king, and attacking the pawn on b2. If white does anything other than this next move, we will take the bishop. You know, if they block with the knight, if they block with their other knight or a pawn or anything like that, we will take their free bishop. But their best move is bishop d2, defending and also attacking, so we will take the pawn on b2 right after. Now this is where the trap really comes into play. You need to know both sides, white and black, and when to do each move. For example, if white does something like bishop c3 to attack and potentially trap our queen, we are now winning with the move bishop b4. Not only does our bishop pin their bishop to their king, preventing them from taking, but it also threatens to win a piece, because as soon as we take, they can't take back as we have our queen here. We're also attacking the rook if they don't move the knight. Uh, the worst thing white can do, absolute worst thing, is queen d2. Every variation here is just bad because after queen d2, we have bishop takes c3, pinning their queen to the king. And if they take back with the knight, we win the rook. Not a big deal. Game goes on. Their best move here is just to block with knight d1. But then we take the pawn in the center. And if they take back, then we have queen. And we're up a whole rook and I believe a pawn. Now we're up plus eight. That's if they take back with the knight. If they take back with the queen, then we have a not so obvious checkmate with queen to c1 checkmate blocking off everything, and that threat will always be looming. We'll always have a queen here or here, depending on the variation, and that threat will always be kind of looming. You'll see in a little bit what I'm talking about. Let's go back even further and just pretend they do not play queen d2. So we've just pinned their bishop to their king, so let's say they take back with the bishop. Now we have a nice little fun trick. Knight takes b4 check, threatening a whole bunch of stuff, this fork on c2. And oddly enough, their best move is knight b to d2, which kind of smothers their king in there. So once we take on c2, they're actually forced to take back with their queen and we win a queen. Now black is up plus 11 in this variation, although it's, it's still not the best one. So let's keep going back. This bishop to c3 move is bad and I'll show you why. So let's keep going back. Their best move in this position, this is the secondary position. After we've done the trifecta, we've taken their pawn. Their best move, white's best move, remember this if you're playing white, is knight to c3 immediately. The good news for black here is that we just play the same move, bishop b4 attacking the knight twice. If they do anything like move the knight to d5, attacking the c7 pawn for that fork, that sweet, sweet fork, we take on d2 with check. Uh, if they take back with the knight, we go king d8 protecting the pawn. If they take back with a queen, that's a blunder, we win a free rook. But this is only if they move the knight. If they don't, then they're probably going to play the best move for white, which is rook b1, skewering these two things. Now, Gotham Chess has a crazy line in its video. That'll be linked below. If you haven't seen it already, go check it out first. But he sacrifices his queen on c3, and after bishop takes, bishop takes with check, and knight blocks. Apparently, that this is fine for black, 
and it's only plus two, plus three for white. We can take this pawn in the middle, and if the knight tries to come out, we just go back and pin it again. So a better move for them is just e4, knight f6 attacking, bishop d3 blocking, castles, castles, and this is fine. Apparently this is very hard to play for white. I have no idea. I think I'm all right at chess and I would just never do this. Be down a queen for no apparent reason. I've seen an Eric Rosen video that uh, he does this and it's a great video. That'll be linked as well. But let's go back. So instead of queen c3, let's play something way more sensible and we'll go queen a3 instead. This makes much more sense. And if white were to play knight d5, which is their best move, it attacks the uh, bishop, attacks the pawn on c7 with that fork again. Our best move here is just to protect it with bishop a5. And it's still pretty even, but white's next move, you have to remember up to this point. If you're playing white and playing the Unglin Gambit, this is where you need to remember to, and it's rook b5. In Gotham's video, he goes on to say that people that know this under 12, 1500 are cheaters and or have seen the video. But if you know the Unglin trap, you need to know up to rook b5. Just as white needs to learn up to rook b5, black also needs to learn up to bishop takes d2 check. For example, if you get yourself into this position and you want to really defend, you know, the, the fork really well and you play something like bishop b6 defending it, well, the rook can still take. It seems kind of crazy. Why would they sacrifice a rook? Because they're not. If you take back with the a-pawn, which you actually should in this position, you will hit the knight c7 fork that we have been talking about this whole time. After king d8 attacking the knight, they go back to a8. And we win the knight, yes, but we're very, very underdeveloped with no real presence in the center. And white can just play on like normal and then castle, uh, whereas we're completely screwed. White is up a pawn and also up plus five. So please do not play bishop d6 in this position. You have to take. Bishop takes d2 check. Doesn't matter which one they take with here. If they take with the knight or they take with the queen, the queen being the best move, we will play king to d8, protecting the c7 square from that knight and that fork. But we also have one more trick up our sleeve. If you are vengeful like me when you play chess, you will want to do the exact same thing that uh, we did to them. So they will play queen to g5 check. We will block with f6. Now, if they take with e-pawn or if they take with the knight, that kind of doesn't work. But if they take with the queen doing the same thing that we did to them then we still have checkmate on c1 that was looming all those turns ago please keep in mind that this is all best case scenario for black if someone is playing the england gambit against you and you're white thank the lord watch this video watch the videos i have linked below and just thank the lord that you got england gambit because white is better off at almost every single turn if they know what they're doing if they don't then you can win easily. I threw the Gotham Chess video, the Chess website, YouTube channel, and Eric Rosen's game in the description below. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. And uh, as a little bonus, I threw in some footage here of me getting absolutely destroyed by the England Gambit. Let me know if you used it in any games and let me know what you want to see next. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's get Mike. Mike, I believe, has beaten us before. Uh, this is the England Gambit. It's best to take, but I can't remember what to do. Uh, just defend like normal. And then there's, I don't think there's anything to do here. Could just go here. I don't know how to play the Ungland game, but I need to learn. Uh, this is a weird one. This is a weird thing you have to do. And I think it's this, this knight move. No, it's this bishop move. Fuck, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's this bishop move. They still take this. But then you can go there and they can't get greedy. Or, no, is it this knight move? I can't remember which one it is. It's one of these two pieces has to come back. But I think it's the bishop. Oh, Lord. I wish I knew how to play the Ungland. It's not this because that gets too greedy. And then they can try and win stuff. I think it's this. I'll have to check after the game. I think it's Bishop. And then uh, I think you are able to do this. Because the Knight protects it. If they take your Rook, obviously you take. They can't take anything within vicinity. So they have to leave. Yes. And then they get pinned. Uh, and now you can't bring your queen here because if you bring your queen Then this happens and then your queen gets pinned and if you do that then they can 
Actually, that's not a bad thing, is it? And it's like everyone's all the more even. Can they do anything like nefarious with that or what? Uh, Take the rook, the pin is off. They take the, then it's a trade. I think that's fine, but I could be completely wrong. Harry the big man, what's good, man? How are you? Did you see what I posted in the art channel? Is it new? Was it the uh, the Titan that you drew the outline of, which I thought was very cool? Yeah, I saw that. I commented on it. I said, you got a good base. You just got to flush out the rest of it. Looks very sick. Ugh. What happened? Oh, I missed it. 